What's up, everybody? Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Today is Friday, March 23rd. Welcome to this week's video update. Know a lot of got, we got a lot of new members who joined us before we close the membership to, uh, to new members. So welcome, everyone. If this is your first update, first week of trading with us. Uh, the, you know, one thing I was going to mention, it is we, we did a lot of adjustments this week, which I know for newer traders, can sometimes be really confusing. So I might take a little extra time to explain the adjustments here, so bear with me. But let's jump into the trades for the week. We started out on Monday the 19th, and our first trade was a closing adjusting trade in FXI. <clears throat> so we closed out one of our strangles, booked a nice profit on this piece of our trade, and we're still holding the other piece of that. Now, this was a little bit frustrating. There's two frustrating trades this week that I that I was trying to get out of, and then they, with this huge move down the last couple of days, they moved away from us, FXI being one of them. So we took off one, booked a nice profit, but then this one was fairly centered as well, and it's run all the way down out of range now. So I was actually, I had orders in, I was trying to get filled. I didn't want to chase, uh, which is what you should do, it's frustrating, but it just it's trading. It's what happens sometimes. So prices now run all the way down. So what we're going to look to do next week, let's first look at the calls to see what, where we're at. I mean, we still have a little bit of premium in there, so not necessarily any reason to, to roll the calls down quite yet. But what we will look to do next week is add another position. This one's in April, so we'll look to add another kind of centered strangle around the current price collect more credit, give ourselves more time to be right, and continue to manage manage uh, our way out of the trade. It was it, if I had gotten out, you know, back when it was fairly centered, it would have we would have booked a uh, we would have been out of FXI, booked a really nice winner. Unfortunately, that's trading. It it ran away from us, so now we'll continue to to manage it. I mean, the the implied volatility obviously is is super high, IV percentile of 99. So even if we had gotten out of it, I'd be looking to, to re-enter and add positions anyway. So that, look for that next week in FXI. Next trade was an opening trade, excuse me, in XLU. And we added a, we sold a strangle in XLU. Uh, IV percentile at the time was 83. So if we take a look at XLU, you know, we've had a little bit of a down movement, just like a lot of things. Uh, but still well within the range here. Not much to do except for wait in XLU. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in forward slash ES, which is the S&P 500 future. So what we did here is we added an iron condor. Uh, IV percentile at the time was currently at 92. So if we take a look at ES, uh, had some big moves the last couple days in the market. So let's uh, let's reset this so we can uncheck the correct boxes here. We've got a couple different positions on an ES. And you can see with this big down move, we're already way down here at the lower end of our range. So we haven't adjusted yet. We will continue to monitor that uh, next week. You know, for, for all of 2017 and then, you know, even the first part of 2018, we kept getting tested to the upside, tested to the upside, and managing our way out of trades that way. And now it's interesting, we're getting tested to our downside. So it's kind of actually a refreshing thing. I like getting tested to the downside way better because that means volatility is spiking, giving us more opportunity to make additional trades. So uh, you can look at adjusting as an opportunity as well. We've also got this uh, long put vertical in ES that we, that we had rolled, which is an alert I'll go over. And you can see with the down move, we've already you know, can't come into the profit on this piece uh, quite a bit. So we'll, we'll be looking to potentially roll this again next week to continue to keep that downside bias in our portfolio. I have been getting some questions from, from new members about the whole short delta, short bias in your portfolio. So I want to address that right now as well. When you trade the way that we do, when we're selling premium and doing iron condors and strangles and our core, a lot of our core trades are selling premium in high implied volatility, you know, we're trying to capture price within a specific range. So the way that you protect yourself from that type of trading is to keep short delta in your portfolio. Keep short, uh, a short bias in your portfolio to protect yourself 
from the velocity of, of what can happen with down moves like we saw in February, like we've seen this week. So this is a perfect reason why you want to keep short delta in your portfolio. So you can see that was a huge uh, benefit of having that piece in there because we, we made money, uh, we're making money on that trade now. So that's uh, the, I've, we, we've got a couple blog posts about how to hedge your portfolio using delta, um, how to trade options like a professional. Those are two different blog posts with videos that you need to watch if you want to understand that concept a little bit better. All right, so moving on, next trade was a closing adjusting trade in ES. So we actually closed out of an iron condor in this one, made a nice profit on that piece of the trade. Next trade was a, a closing trade in Oracle. So this was a an earnings, uh, pre-earnings long straddle that we had put on. And we were looking for an expansion in implied volatility and a decent price move leading up to earnings. Didn't quite get there. Uh, and so we booked a small loser on that trade and just, you know, we had to be out before the earnings announcement. And so we needed to close that trade, took a small loss on that one. Next trade was another closing trade where we had an iron condor on in SPY. And, uh, and, and so we took that off, booked a, booked a nice profit on SPY. And I'll, I'll look at the closing trades here in a minute to show you what, those, what the profits were on some of these closing trades. Had a great week of, of profitable closed trades. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in ZS. So like I said, we had a lot of adjustments this week. Uh, so this one was in soybeans. And basically what we did was we closed out our call vertical, uh, booked a nice profit on that piece of the trade. And then we're still holding a full iron condor in ZS. So if we take a look at that, you can see it's hanging out near the uh, lower end of our range, but still well within, nothing to do there. No adjustments needed at this point. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in ES. So this is these are the kind that kind of uh, give a little bit of confusion uh, to newer traders. So remember, when we roll a position, essentially what that is, is you're closing out the current position and you're reopening at a different uh, uh, expiration cycle and possibly different strikes as well. And so this is one that we, you know, we, we made some profit on this piece of the trade and then we wanted to, so we closed it out and reopened it. Now, when you're trading options on futures, the platform, in this case, Thinkorswim, does not have the functionality to do the one transaction roll like you can with options on stocks or ETFs. So we actually have to manually do this as two separate orders. So that's why you'll see it look like this. We sold this vertical and we bought this one, okay? So we were rolling from April to May, so we we're rolling from one expiration cycle to the next, and we are adjusting our strike. So we closed out the 2840-2810 spread, and we reopened the 2780-2750 spread. So I always then reiterate that this is what we're currently holding. Uh, that's the put vertical we're holding. And as you can see, that you know this was back on Tuesday that we did this roll, and you can see, uh, which I already, I already showed you, is that that long put vertical you know, price was right here after the roll, it's already moved all the way down, giving us that much profit in the trade. So to give you an idea of that, that's why we continue to keep that short delta in our portfolio. Okay, so we're gonna keep keep on holding on to that. Uh, we may we may roll it again next week if the, if the market stays steady to lower. So look for that uh, next week. We wanna book that little profit that we took in the, uh, where, we're, where we're currently at with that one, and we wanna continue to roll it give ourselves more time in the trade, uh, you know, in case there's further down moves in the market. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So this was a very similar trade. The difference of, of why it looks the way it is is because on toss, you can do this in one transaction. So you don't have to buy back the other one and then resell in two separate trades. When you do a roll, you can actually roll it in one, one trade, one transaction on toss, but it's the same concept. So uh, the difference with this one is we did not roll from April to May. We rolled uh, based because we had you know 30 days to expiration. We just stayed in April. So we just wanted to roll our strikes closer to the money. So we closed out the 255, 257, and we rolled that down to the 248, 251. Okay, so that's what we're holding now. 
So if we take a look at DIA, uh, let's take off the, uncheck the iron condor that we have. Sometimes toss makes you reset these before it lets you uncheck them. So if we take off the, the current iron condor, uh, this is the, let me make sure I'm looking at the right one because we did two of these simultaneous uh, back to back. So the 248, 251. So if we just check on the 248, 251, that's what we've got. So again, price was right here, right after the roll with this big move down that we've seen the last couple of days. Boom, we've, we've already booked, you know, we've already, get, not booked, we've already gained that amount of profit, about $323 on this piece. And then the next alert was the same thing, rolling this one down. So price started off about right here and it's always, it's already moved all the way down here. So same thing, early next week, we'll be looking to potentially roll these again to keep that short bias in our portfolio that we need and to you know, lock in these gains and reposition the, the strikes a little bit closer to where, to where price is now. Okay, if you're a newer trader, you might be thinking, oh my gosh, this is so confusing. I don't know if I can you know, grasp this. Give it time. Okay, this, you, you've got to go through multiple trade cycles, multiple expiration cycles, and eventually this stuff will become second nature. So just stick with it, you know, especially if you're not in these trades already. This is going to sound almost like a foreign language at first until you go through the course, understand the concepts, and then you actually do it from beginning to end. So once you have a trade on and you have to go through a few cycles of making adjustments, you'll, you'll start to grasp this stuff a lot better. So please don't feel overwhelmed, uh, but, but just you know, keep, on, keep on with us for a while until you understand the whole concept because it's a very powerful tool once you understand the value of the way that we make adjustments and the way that it can provide some consistency for returns over time, okay? Uh, also in DIA, uh, I haven't see, I haven't gone over this alert yet, but we also, while we're here, I'll show you, we also added another iron condor, okay? So the price is hanging out right here, still well within our range, no profit or loss, so just continuing to wait on that piece of the trade. And by the way, uh, I, I've said this a lot of times before, and, and, and this is in our course too, but we don't like to have it on more than three positions, three trades on any one symbol at a time, okay? So we've got these two short call verticals that I just mentioned that were from previous iron condors that we've continued to roll a couple times. So that one and this one, so that's two separate trades. You know, this one's got three contracts, this one has four, and then we've got another iron condor, which is in another expiration cycle that's out in May. Uh, so, we, so we've got three different positions on in this one symbol. That's it. That's, that's where we kind of stop. So we're going to continue to manage. And, you know, if we get a profit on this one, we can we book it. You know, then we can potentially add another position in the future. But we never have more than three trades on in any one symbol at a time. A, it gets very difficult to track and remember what you're in. And B, you don't want to just keep adding and adding. We like to scale into positions as implied volatility goes higher. Well, we've got great high implied volatility after this week. And so that's why we're, you know, we're continuing to add positions and we'll have multiple positions on in certain symbols, uh, but no more than three. That's kind of our, our rule of thumb. Uh, so we had those back-to-back -back rolling DIA verticals. Next trade was a closing trade in XLV. So this was a nice one. We, uh, you know, we had adjusted this multiple times. Uh, price kind of ping-ponged around. We adjust, 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 and, and ended up booking a really nice profit uh, completely out of XLV, uh, IV percentiles at 91. We will potentially look to re-enter something in XLV uh, next week, assuming applied volatility stays high. If we take a look at the chart, you can see up, it's up at the 97th percentile. You don't want to go all in. I mean, look at IV rank. It's still at 40 so that's got a lot of room to go up still, <clears throat> meaning the, it, the options can continue to get more expensive. So we don't want to jump in. We, we like to be methodical about this. Put on a couple trades, new trades today. You know, wait till tomorrow, put on another one or two and just and spread those out. So as price moves around, you're continuing to add these positions on at different time frames, different price levels, in different symbols. And that's how you build consistency is that continual methodical diversification and adding and booking and adding and closing and adding and adjusting 
over time, okay? Uh, so that's XLV. Next trade was a closing trade in EWW. So this was a, a short strangle that we had on in EWW. I had to make a few adjustments, but again, by staying mechanical, booked another nice profit in that trade. Uh, uh, and then we had we actually added a new position in EWW, so I'll get to that here in uh, an alert. Uh, next trade was another closing trade. We bought back an iron condor in GLD, uh, the gold ETF. Booked a nice profit of over 45% of max profit. Uh, had a nice contraction in implied volatility. IV percentile when we closed this was, was down at uh, currently, should be currently, <laughs> at 21. Um, uh, so we had a nice contraction, which allowed us to get out of that trade. If we take a look at GLD now, after the last couple days, you'll see implied volatility has shot back up. Okay, so we'll be potentially looking to add a gold trade, a GLD, probably an iron condor in GLD next week. Okay. Next trade, an opening adjusting trade in DIA. So that's the that's adding the iron condor in the May cycle. I already went over that. Uh, next trade was an opening trade in EWW. Like I said, we, we went ahead and jumped back in here. Uh, implied volatility popped its head back up, so we jumped back in with a short strangle in EWW. You can see it. Uh, implied volatility increased even more after we put this on, so it's still very centered, but we're just down slightly on it. So just looking for some time to pass and for theta to decay in that one. Um, okay, let's see. Moving on to the next trade. By the way, oh, one thing I was going to mention on EWW for, for your newer traders, um, you know, sometimes the question is, well, can I, can I just buy the wings and define this to make it an iron condor? If I'm trading an IRA or if I'm trading a, uh, or if I don't have permission to trade naked options or if I just like defined risk, can I, can I trade an iron, iron condor? And the answer is yes, you can. But the problem is, and why I typically don't on these lower price symbols, I mean, this, this stock is, this ETF's trading at around 50 bucks, right? Over, uh, yeah, right at about 50 bucks. So when you define the risk, you're gonna be collecting a lower credit, so meaning your max profit is going to be lower, and, 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 the, and you double the amount of contracts you're trading, so your transaction costs are gonna be higher. So you need to determine, is it worth it? You know, is it, is the risk that I'm taking worth the max profit or the re potential reward and taking into cons consideration the, the amount of transaction costs, okay? If you're trading on Tastyworks, that's significantly reduced your transaction costs because there's zero closing commissions, but, um, but you, just, you need to be aware of that. So on lower price symbols where you collect less credit, I'm typically doing your uncovered uh, positions like strangles and straddles and things like that. When you get up to the higher price symbols, you know, things over $100, that's when I'm typically defining the risk to make a better use of capital. So it's just about an efficiency of capital and where your overall, you know, risk tolerance is. So that's, that's why we, you know, when I do a, a strangle or some type of naked position, you know, I try to put in an alternative trade for a defined risk, but sometimes it just doesn't make sense. So you just, you've got to determine for you and your, your account if it makes sense or not. Next trade, a closing adjusting trade in the Qs. So we close the call vertical side of the iron condor. So price uh, on Wednesday, when it, uh, let's see, uh, Thursday, when the price had that huge move down, uh, breached our downside break even. And so we closed out the untested side. And so we're still holding, uh, so we're still holding the, the put vertical side and we're still holding those short call vertical spreads. Okay, so if we go to QQQ, this is one that I got quite a few questions on. So let's first look at, we've got these two different uh, short call verticals that were previously iron condors, okay, that, we, that we've that we rolled. And, you know, we're, we're already start, starting to get some profit in. So we've got that one. And we've got this one, which is a, was just one strike different. So it looks very similar. But then uh, the alert that I just mentioned is we took off the call side because price breached our, our downside break even. And so now we're left with the put vertical, the losing side. And so a lot of people kind of get freaked out about this or nervous or can't quite understand why we do this because they're saying, okay, this one's losing, you know, price breached here. What do we, why are we holding on to the losing side? And the answer is one, the, um, this is a defined risk trade. So you need to be comfortable with that amount of risk when you put the trade on 
uh, if you know if 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 you happen to have a huge move and 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 you take a max loss. Now, what we'll look to do with this trade is a couple things. One, if we look at how many days we have to expiration, we still have 28 days to expiration. Okay, that's a long time. Okay, so there's definitely not any reason to do this. You've got to let the probabilities play out. If we change our calendar to the expiration date, which in this case is 421, what you'll see is, I mean, there there's still a very good chance that price could come back in the range. I mean, if you, you look at the shaded box, that's the one standard deviation move up or down. So the probability of price, you know, going back into range, it, it's as good as any, right? I mean, it, it, there's still a decent probability. You've got to let the probabilities play out. So we don't want to just close this and, and take that loss because price may come all the way back. And, and the fact that, you know, we've seen this huge move down in price, you know, having a little bit of a bounce back, a little bit of a retracement up, it's definitely not unheard of. And so we don't want to jump the gun and try to try to cut things off before the probabilities play out. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, it's defined risk. So we're not looking to do anything yet. We won't do anything with it probably, you know, if it came back into range and we get, you know, we're at a, at a profitable position, we'd close it. But if it's still hanging out here, I'm going to hold it all the way till almost expiration week. And then at that point, we'll decide, do we want to roll it and give ourselves more time in the trade or do we want to close it and just take the loss? Okay. So that's the plan with that. And remember, we've got, so this is, you know, it's a losing position, uh, but we've also got these short call vertical spreads that are protecting us to the downside as well. Okay. So that's the power of kind of playing both sides. You're, you've got some short bias positions, you've got some long bias positions, and you're, you're, you know, you're playing both sides and you're hoping price kind of ping pongs around and you might potentially win on both. And that's the name of the game. Okay. All right, moving on. Uh, so I already went over the, the two. So we had two back-to-back -back, uh, rolling call vertical spreads, very similar to what we already went over in DIA. I already showed those to you. The, you know, we've, since we put them on, you know, price came down even more, so we're in the profit on those, just holding, holding on for more. And again, to keep some more of that short bias, that short directional bias in our portfolio. Okay, so that was those back-to-back um, rolling adjusting verticals in the queues. And lastly, our last trade was a closing trade in IWM. So we had an iron condor on and IWM had to make multiple uh, adjustments in IWM, which I'm going to show you when we go to the closing trades here. But by staying mechanical, we were able to book a nice winner and, uh, and we'll look to re-enter uh, probably a position in IWM next week. Because with this down move, implied volatility here is very high as well. Okay, as you can see, 99, IV rank is 78, uh, nice and high there, so really juiced up options, a, a good time to potentially sell those. Okay, so we'll look at that next week. If we take a look at the uh, closed trades that we made, you can see this is the IWM Iron Condor. Look at all those adjustments we had to make. You know, adjust close, adjust roll, adjust open, adjust close. All the way down the line, when we closed out, booked a profit of 164 bucks. Right, nothing, nothing crazy. Not a huge monster winner by any means. But, but when a, but when we first got in this, price just kept moving up, 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 and and blew through our upside range, blew through our upside range. And so, just by staying mechanical, adjusting, extending duration, just continuing to play the game, we turned a loser, you know, a big loser, into a winner. And that's the name of the game. If you can. If you can uh, extend duration and continue to book profits and manage out of uh, when price makes huge moves out of your range, and then you can just book the winners as they come, the ones that stay in your range, the easy ones, you put those together, that's consistent profitability, and that's, that's what we do. Uh, so, that was a, so that was a nice one. We had the GLD Iron Condor we closed for a nice winner. The, e the EWW short strangle, again, had to make a couple adjustments, a couple rolls, end up booking a nice profit of $160. Uh, XLV, again, remember we had we had uh, three different iron condors on at one time, and we just kept, you know, price was just kind of going up and down, up and down. That two-sided action is what we love. It's those one-directional moves that just keep going and going and going, like we saw in 2017, that are very hard to manage. You know, but with this one, booked a nice profit of $686, okay? 
Uh, SPY, Aaron Condor, booked a profit of 272. Uh, Oracle's the pre-earnings long straddle that we took a little loss of $66 on. Uh, the ZN short straddle booked a nice profit of 468. Now, you know, some of these some of these profits are are bigger than what we've seen in in previous months too. And one of the reasons is we've had high implied volatility, right? Implied volatility was so low all of 2017 that when you put on a trade, your max profit is only so much. Well, when implied volatility gets higher, your max profit goes up because you're collecting more premium or collecting more credit, which makes your profits bigger. That's, that's why we do it. Uh, EWZ short strangle made 144. Uh, XLE short strangle, these, this is from last week, 168. So anyway, those are some of the, the closed trades. Let's take a look at some of the other current positions we have on uh, that we didn't necessarily do alerts in this week, one of which is the Euro forward slash 6E. This was another frustrating one. We're, we're up money on this trade still, uh, but it was kind of the same situation of FXI as I was trying to get Phil to close the trade out and book about a 700 and some dollar winner uh, when price was right here. Never got filled and price has then moved up on us. It moved, moved away. So we could still close this for a really nice winner, uh, but, but I'd like to get a little bit more out of it. So looking for a little bit of a down move in 6E. If it does continue to rip higher, we would probably add another centered strangle around that in the next expiration, collect more credit, give ourselves more time to be right on that one. Natty Gas, we've got an iron condor in, in Nat Gas, got a little bit of profit on this piece of the trade, not enough to take off yet, so we'll continue to, to monitor and manage that. I think I mentioned soybeans, we've got this iron condor on, uh, need, need a little bit of a move up, a little bit more time to pass to benefit that. Got this iron condor in wheat, so just waiting on that one. Could use a little bit of a, a move higher. Some more contraction in IV there. Apple, so this is one that we, uh, uh, price had moved against us initially. We rolled it to extend duration. Uh, now, we're, now we're in the profit here, and we'll look to potentially keep that on by rolling uh, next week, or, or we might just close it out for a little winner. DIA, I already mentioned that one. EEM, kind of the same situation as, as Apple. Uh, we, put this, we, we put these on around the same time and just kind of adding short delta, um, looking for some downside bias. Uh, we had to roll this one because price initially moved against us. And now we're, again, same thing. We're in the profit now. So we will look to either continue to roll that one to, to book more, look for more profit, more downside, or we may uh, just take it as a winner next week. EWW I mentioned, FXI I mentioned, IYR. So this is the real estate ETF. Uh, we've got an adjusted strangle in here. So we've adjusted this one time. Price is just kind of hanging out here on our lower end of our range. Uh, we might potentially look to add to this one next week. Uh, you know, if price comes back into range, we'll probably just, you know, keep, keep watching it, keep managing it. But if it keeps lower, we'll probably add another centered strangle around that. You can see like everything else right now, implied volatility is nice and high, so it's a good time to add and continue to, to be in these positions. Q's I mentioned, XLE, so this is the oil and gas ETF. Uh, not much profit or loss there, so just waiting on that one. XLU, same thing, strangle just waiting on that one. XRT, so this is one that we, uh, we're about to break even to profit on to profitability on this one. We've had a few different adjustments. Price is hanging out here on the lower end of the range. If it continues lower, we, we will probably roll our calls down uh, and then maybe potentially add another piece to this trade as well. So that's all the alerts. That's all of our positions that we've got going on. Uh, I, I do want to get some more positions on here because we did close out uh, quite a few, which is good because we booked those for profits. Uh, but now we need to add some more on with, with implied volatility popping its head back up. So definitely look for some new uh, opening trades early next week, potentially GLD, potentially adding to some of these that I mentioned, uh, SPY, IWM, you know, some of the stock indices. We'll get into at least one or two more of those and continue to keep the game going. So hope everybody has a great weekend and we'll talk to you next week.